Hey everyone, I'm about to read to you about to read to you something I did at 9 a.m. this morning and finished about 9.52 at something I used the Dragon Natural Speaker program to do and then corrected by typing and the title says it down there, it says no one is satisfied or I think it's, it's what I called it in several other topics or no one is truly satisfied and if you don't believe me there's the evidence right here. Okay? There's your evidence. But this, <laughs> but this is what I said, and I quote what I said at 9 a.m. this morning. And I quote, Let's face facts. No matter what any of the creative staff does on the Sonic comic book at Archie Comics, no one is truly satisfied and there is a number of reasons as to why. First reason, number one, you can't do a story arc no matter how long it could be without invoking one fan base because you don't feature their favorite characters or the characters they feel are more established. It's a true fact. Over the past two years, over the past two years, you've had the Saturday morning fans be enraged because the stories were focusing more on the game characters. But on the other hand, you've had the game fans enraged with the upcoming Countdown to Chaos arc, and in previous issues of the past, where the Saturday morning slash comic cast were featured more prominently than the game cast. So, matter, so no matter what this creative staff does, unless they can find a way to balance things out, it's always going to be a no-win situation. So in other words, basically, until they find a way to balance, so in other words, like I said, until they find a way to compromise on both sides to where both sides will be happy, it's never going to end. You know, it's always going to be a no-winner. Number two, relationships. More importantly, romantic relationships always seem to be the center of controversy. Because one fan base wants Sonic to be wants Sonic to be with either Amy or Blaze or Rouge or even as crazy as it sounds, Elise. Well, the other fan base wants Sonic to be together and stay together with Sally. And thus is the reason why when Sonic is placed into what many have dubbed and noticed as a temporary relationship, boyfriend girlfriend, with Sally. You have the game fan base totally ticked off at the fact that once again, Sonic and Sally are together as an item, even if it's only temporary. But on the flip side, when someone like Ian Flynn shows slash teases hints of a possible Sonic Amy or of possibly or possibly Sonic Amy or any other game girl with Sonic in the comics, you have the Saturday morning slash comic fan base totally ticked off as well as if it was the other way around, which is why relationships for Sonic to be in in the comic are not featured as much as they used to be. In other words, you don't see Sonic, you know, in a relationship with Sally longer than maybe five, maybe ten issues at the most, maybe six issues at the less, if you will. You know, that's why you didn't see the recent reuniting last as long as it did. But continuing on, and I quote, But you see, what Game Core fans just don't understand or refuse to understand and overlook is the fact that Sally is the default choice. As much as fans want Sonic to be with Amy or maybe even Blaze, they have to understand that because they appear in the games with Sonic, that it would detract from what each other's personality is about. When it comes to Amy, they want Sonic to be in a steady and official relationship with her that no matter what other media focuses on Sonic, that they, that media, have to acknowledge Sonic and Amy as the official couple. But again, that detracts away from the personality that Sega had given Sonic, and that is a personality of being a free spirit and not held down by anything. Which is why when the Saturday morning cartoons and the comics pair him up with Sally, Sega never really says anything, because they understand, especially with the help of their representatives, they get acknowledged in the credits of the first page of the comics that pairing Sonic with Sally will not detract away 
from his personality that they have established for him because A, she's not an in-game character yet, B, even though she's part of the franchise, her relationship with Sonic is the kind of relationship that can be turned on for as long as it needs to be and turned off for as long as it needs to be. In other words, uh, a lot of fans, what they don't understand is, you know, those that want him to be with Amy, what they don't understand is it will detract from her personality because her personality is, yeah, Chase, Sonic, and everything, but you want that personality to change to where it's like she's with Sonic and Sonic's now going to always have somebody that's clinging on to him 24-7, if you get my drift. But continuing on, and I quote, You take a look at Nintendo, for example. You can't tell me that the people at Nintendo don't realize that the fans have acknowledged Mario and Peach and Luigi and Daisy as two individual couples, because they have. The only difference is they don't shove it in our faces, because they know if they were to come out and officially acknowledge those four as individual boyfriend-girlfriend couples, that it would detract from what made the characters famous in the first place, which is why they don't slash haven't come out and officially acknowledged it yet. Thus is the reason why Sega has yet, and probably never will, come out and acknowledge Sonic and Amy, or even Sonic and Blaze as official boyfriend-girlfriend cu couples, is because it would detract away from not only Sonic's established personality of being a free spirit, it would also detract away from the personalities that have been established with Amy and Blaze. In other words, with Amy, the chasing, you know, always dream be with Sonic, it would detract away from her, and she would end up being the girlfriend that's always around him 24-7, like some fans want her to be. And Blaze, it would detract away from her personality as being guardian of the soul emeralds and being her own individual person. And I finished this part uh, number two off by saying, which again, and I finished the second reason off by saying, which again is the reason, even if one does not want to acknowledge it, Sally is the default girlfriend slash, slash love interest of Sonic in the Archie comic books. <sighs> Three. When one creates or announces that they're going to be doing a long story arc, you have one side that supports them, and you have another side that believes it's a big mistake. When Ian did his long story arc, which officially began in 225, and with a few interruptions slash crossovers notwithstanding, officially ended in 252, there were some fans that felt he did the best job he could, and that he was trying to give us something different and refreshing. On the flip side, you have some that believe it was entirely a waste of time that all he was doing was padding on and padding on and padding on without no real conclusion in sight. And as much as Ian would like to come out and has come out to try to explain the reasoning behind what's going on and even going as far as to admit that the near 25 issue, not counting Worlds Collide crossover, was even too long for his taste, it seems no matter how you feel about the guy or anyone else that would attempt to do an epic story arc for a very established comic, that there will always be a division amongst the fans. Four. Finally, now, the fourth reason. Finally, we have the redesigns. As I've mentioned in my monthly opinions video for this month, it's not the first time that the Saturday morning cast has been redesigned. You take a look back in 1993 and 94, as well as you, as well as you take a look, as well as you take a look at the original Sonic miniseries comic and the first official 14 in the first official 14 issues and then later on down the line starting with backstories in issues 17 and 18 as well as in the 48 page comic book special Sonic in your face as well as down the line in the mid to late 80s issues where they certain half cybernetic bunny and even afterwards in issues in issue 134 we have seen the characters go through a number of redesigns True, some of the redesigns have just been adding new clothing or making one's hair longer, but we have seen our share of redesigns, even if they were small tweaks here and there. But when it comes to these new redesigns, which are being introduced in the 20th anniversary year of the comic, once again we have an overall fan base divided, because you have some that like it and you have some that don't care for it. Me, I'm fine with it, because honestly, I don't think it's the redesigns that a lot of fans are worried about. 
It's more or less what the personalities of the characters are going to be like. Because, uh, okay, because honestly, uh, okay, what was it? It's, okay, it's more or less of what the personalities of the characters are going to be like. Basically, will they, be the, will they still be the same? Will they be different? Or will they be tweaked in some areas? You see, that honestly is what I feel, Ian, I mean, okay, you see, that's honestly what I feel fans who don't like the redesigns are really worried about. Because let's be honest, we all know that those that don't like the redesigns, they will get over them in time. It's more or less what the personalities are going to be like. Now, Ian has said each character will be who they are. For example, Sally will be Sally, and, or Antoine will be Antoine, Bunny will be Bunny, etc. So right now, so for right now, as much as people may not want to believe Ian Flynn, we have to take him at his word. Now true, they may, and I say this as a slight possibility, they may just a bit, or they may, they may tweak just a bit of the personalities on the characters, so that new fans can relate to them. But like I said, it's a slight possibility. Overall, no matter how one looks at it, there's no satisfying the overall fan base. The only way it can be satisfied, as I mentioned earlier, is to find a way to balance everything out. But even then, even if it's a smooth ride from then on, you may and probably still Ill will have a divided fan base no matter what. And that is basically um, what I wrote or what I typed up courtesy of Dragon Natural Speaker uh, this morning. But basically what I'm trying to say here is no matter what is being done, it's like no one is truly going to be satisfied. You know, you know, it's like on one hand, you know, you have the, it's like I talk about with the relationships, you know, uh, the situation there. You have on one hand, uh, you have a fan base that wants Sonic to be either together with Amy or Blaze or Rouge or maybe even as crazy as it sounds, Elise, well, the other fan base wants him to be with Sally. And there's a reason why, and I, and I mentioned this, there's a reason why Sally's always put with Sonic and vice versa. It's because she's like a de facto, she's a default love interest. She's the kind that no matter what storyline would come up, you could turn her relationship with Sonic off just like that, and then whenever you feel like it, you could turn it back on. On, or you can kind of really build back to, towards it. You know, with Amy, you got a lot of these Son Amy fans and some of these Son Blaze fans, and what they don't understand is Amy's personality, her character, is to keep chasing after Sonic. What they want, basically, Son Amy fans, is for Son, for Amy to be with Sonic and thus drastically change her character to being the girlfriend of Sonic and being with him 24-7. And they don't understand that's not how it works. I mean, it's like I said, for example, you know, you look at Mario and Peach and Luigi and, Luigi and Daisy of Nintendo. You know, Nintendo knows that fans acknowledge those four as two individual couples, but they, Nintendo, have not officially acknowledged it yet. And why? Because they know it would detract away from whom, what made the characters who they are. You know, so that's about it. And then as far as the redesigns go, you know, again, like I said, it's not the first time we've seen the characters go through redesigns. We've seen it before. It's just that, yeah, these redesigns are bigger or more major change than we've ever thought, but still, we've seen it before. It's no big difference. And just like then, we've gotten over it. We're going to get over it again. Because my honest opinion, it's not the redesigns. A lot of the fans that don't like them that don't like them are worried about it's the personalities and I think if anything at most the personalities might have some tweaks in certain areas that's about it for the characters but that's how I look at it but anyway this is just my video uh, version of what I typed up this morning again I showed you the proof there and that's all I'm gonna say uh, comment below let me know what you guys think video responses are greatly appreciated talk to you all later